Hi, I'm Amashni. In lessons 2, 3 and 4, we investigated the properties of scalene, isosceles and equilateral triangles and we found that there were specific lines that we can construct in these triangles. Do you still remember what these lines are? We constructed the following lines. Angle bisector, the line that bisects an angle in a triangle. Perpendicular bisector is a line that bisects a line segment at a 90 degree angle. Median, the line from the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. And altitude, a line segment from the vertex of a triangle drawn perpendicular to the opposite side or the line containing the opposite side. We also found that when we constructed these lines in our triangles, they intersected in one point. We call this point the point of concurrency. In today's lesson, we will be focusing on these points of concurrency. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the terms orthocenter, centroid, incenter, and circumcenter. Let's start off today's lesson by reminding ourselves of how we defined concurrency. Here are a few graphics to refresh our memories. In mathematics, we say that if two or more line segments, rays or even planes intersect in a single point, they are concurrent. The three line segments in diagrams A and B are not concurrent, while the three line segments in diagram C are concurrent. The point where the lines intersect is called the point of concurrency. What I would like to show you today is that the point of concurrency of medians, angle bisectors, perpendicular bisectors and altitudes each have a specific name. And in our triangle, some of these points of concurrency serve a specific purpose. Let's have a look at our altitude first. Here's our graphic of the two scalene triangles we used in lesson two. Do you remember that in triangle ABC, we had to construct altitudes and to do this, we had to extend line segment CA to this point and line segment BA to this point. We also noticed that the points where these altitudes intersect is a point on the outside of the triangle. But in triangle DEF, we find that the altitudes intersect on the inside of the triangle. The point of concurrency for altitudes is called the orthocenter. This name comes from the Greek word orthos that means straight or upright or right. So the term orthocenter literally means the center of the straights or uprights. You should agree that this is quite a fitting name as we know that an altitude is a line segment drawn from the vertex of a triangle and that it is perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to the opposite side. The next point of concurrency we will focus on is a point of concurrency for medians. Let's refer back to our diagram that we drew in lesson 2. To construct medians in each of these triangles, we first found the midpoints of each of these sides. We then drew a line from the vertex to the midpoint of these sides. The point of concurrency of medians also has a specific name. The point of concurrency of the medians is called the centroid. The interesting thing about the centroid is that it is the point of gravity in a triangle. So, if you wanted to construct a mobile to entertain a new baby brother or sister, and you wanted the triangles to hang parallel to the ground, you would punch a hole through the centroid to spread the weight of the triangle evenly. Next, we will investigate the angle bisectors. Remember, in lesson two, we constructed the angle bisectors in the obtuse angle triangle as well as the acute angle triangle. Do you remember that angle bisectors divide angles into two equal parts? Do you see 
that here the angle bisectors intersect at point G. If we look at the acute angle triangle DEF, we see that the angle bisectors also intersect at one point here, which is H. The point of concurrency of the angle bisectors is called the in-center. The in-center of a triangle has a very special property that I would like to show you. For this exercise, we will need a pair of compasses. Let's go back to our diagram. If you take your pair of compasses and measure the distance from the in-center to the side, what do you notice? Can you see that the in-center is equidistant to the sides? Equidistant means that the distance from the in-center to the sides are equal throughout. What this means is that if we set this length as a radius, we should be able to draw a circle on the inside of the triangle, like this. Let's just make that a bit darker. Can you think of an example of where we can apply this knowledge practically? What about this problem? If you have a piece of land that looks like this and you have an existing vegetable garden here, how would you add another circular patch of carrots as large as possible but also attached to your current garden? Why don't you think about this for a while? Do you think your knowledge of the in-center and its relationship to a circle can help us with this problem? Can you see that if we construct a triangle here and find the in-center of the triangle, you would be able to make a new patch to the specifications given? Isn't it interesting that geometry can also be applied to our everyday lives? We have already explained the terms orthocenter, centroid, and in center. Now it is time to look at the circumcenter. Now, which of the lines that we have constructed in lesson two do we still have to look at? Yes, perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular bisector is a line that bisects a line segment at a 90 degree angle. A line segment can have many bisectors and many lines that are drawn perpendicular to it. However, each line segment on a plane can only have one line that bisects at 90 degrees. So let's go back to our diagram where we drew perpendicular bisectors. In the obtuse angle triangle ABC, we find that the perpendicular bisectors intersect at point I. In the acute angle triangle DEF, we find that the perpendicular bisectors intersect at point J. You should be able to predict what these points of concurrency are called. The point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle is called the circumcenter. The circumcenter also has a specific property, just like the incenter. Let's go back to our diagram to find out what it is. Have your pair of compasses ready. If we use our pair of compasses and measure from the circumcenter to this side, and then the circumcenter to this side, we see obviously that the lengths are not the same. But look what happens if we measure from the circumcenter to one of the vertices, and to this vertex, and to this vertex. Do you think we can use this length as a radius? Let's see. Do you see that the circle goes through all the vertices and is drawn around the triangle? Now isn't that something? Let's recap what we learned today. We can summarize the lines and the points of concurrency that can be drawn in a triangle. The point of concurrency of the altitudes is called the orthocenter. The point of concurrency of the medians is called the centroid. The point of concurrency of the angle bisectors is called the in-center. The point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors is called the circumcenter. 
I trust that you have found today's lesson very useful and hope that you are beginning to understand that geometrical shapes have specific relationships with each other that help us study them.